All right, it is time for Building San Diego and where are the opportunities? Where's the upside in downtown? Welcome back, Cooper McLaughlin. How you doing, my friend? Always a pleasure. Great to see you. Brent Cole is here. Good to see you. How you doing, sir? Yeah, From good. Welcome San Diego Real Estate. Um, so, a lot going on in downtown, but you said, Brent, when we talked on the phone, that there's areas that have more upside potential, let's say, than others. I think we should share some of those secrets. Well, um, I definitely show a lot, my fair share of downtown properties and talking to clients and people interested in what's happening and how things are expanding. Uh, some of the peripheral neighborhoods of downtown are certainly worth looking at. And um, some of them are a little further down the road than others, so there's some inherent risks there. But uh, um, of course, Golden Hill is one that comes to mind right off the bat. And um, you know, right now in Golden Hill, you can still find a two bedroom properties that uh, start in the, very, in the, in the threes and uh, in the low three. So um, definitely a conversation piece where downtown, you, you can't even come close to that. And so it's stone throw away. And Golden Hill as well for some lending opportunities, uh, it's considered a distressed area. So there's a, a pocket up there that if you have lower credit scores, um, it's called the Home Ready, Fannie Mae Home Ready program. Okay. So it's a way for people who maybe wouldn't be able to buy and afford to buy, they can still get very, very low interest rates. So there's a lot of times there's all sorts of add-ons and everything else. If you have low FICOs, maybe low down payment, well, this caps what those add-ons can be. So it's a nice little pocket from that perspective where you don't have to go FHA, VA to get the low down payment and the low interest rates. Um, so there are some opportunities with the that home as well. like 1% down, isn't it, or something like that? It's, it's 3% 3 percent down, yeah. Yeah. So it's just on the, the add-ons, and so it helps keep the interest rates down. And It does. It does. So a lot of times with those add-ons, you know, sure, you can start at an interest rate of 4%, but once you have, you know, four points in add-on, it, it gets high fairly quickly. Um, but in that specific neighborhood, it really is a great opportunity to keep now those this rates is, low. <clears throat> you said this per periphery, so this isn't 92101, right? This is 102? 102. 102 in Golden Hill. So I'm just going to pull it up here on the map real quick. So you kind of get an idea of like, you know, where East Village is, let's say. This is like my old stomping grounds right here. Mine too. Gas lamp Me quarter. Me too. Right there. Yeah, right? right. <laughs> we all spend a lot of time oh, in, yeah. uh, in that area. Petco Park down here in this area, and then Golden Hill right over here. So it's always been kind of a thing like this, this five highway has always been sort of a a, boundary. a stop. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. a pretty big boundary, right? And at this point, you know, I mean, East Village was... Um, almost like a, a dangerous area. It was a lot of homeless. There was all these issues. But then you have the library has gone in over yeah. there, which really made a big difference. Um, obviously, Petco Park was huge. Uh, you can't underplay that. But then just overall the development of the area yeah. that's taken place. I used to see you at Starbucks back in the day, you know, and right there we in the corner down there. And, that's right. Uh, we still have a condo down there, but we, um, you know, that neighborhood has definitely changed. And, and over the years, getting involved and seeing. Uh, potentially what could happen, I think it's really come to fruition and it still has a ways to go, but I think that explosion of what's going to be happening here with the Idea District, Ballpark Village, the UCSD coming into town here soon. Yeah, we got to talk about that. We do. Um, I didn't even know about You guys just told me about this. I had no idea. I'm out of the loop now because <laughs> I'm not in downtown anymore. I would yeah. know these things, but that essentially that little parking lot over there where that old home was, that yellow house. Yep is being turned into a new campus spot. Yeah, I mean, that was the campus. courtyard for a while. Um, the courtyard was this really cool project that these students put together uh, from the New School of Architecture, and they had their master th their thesis statement, and they took these uh, reused shipping containers and repurposed them and create this really great civic cultural space with concerts and events that they would program and virtually an unused city-owned parcel of land. Now UCSD has purchased the land and they've moved on and so that's what's happening and and it's going to be I think a, a catalyst uh, that will continue with you know development in downtown. It's got to it's got to be a positive and uh, you, if you want to pull it up uh, Jade we've got this is the from uh, UCSD news directly from their website showing sort of a rendering of what it looks like. They're, I guess they're calling it East Village Yards I'm not sure. Um, just an artist rendering and then if we go and we actually look 
at the map, we can drill down and we can show you exactly where that's going to be. So it's going to be, uh, mar is it 11th and Market? Uh, park and Market. Park and Market. Yep. yep. It's on, so the, on the 12th, north yeah. end of the block. So near 12th right here. So right here, boom. This is starting to get pretty cool. So here's Park and Market. This is what you're talking about. Yep. That's that old home right there. I'm going to yep. drill in on it a little bit So more. as of last week, they put that thing on a semi and moved it out of there, and it's no longer there. So they started demo, and it, we, that, that lot will change very quickly. Yeah, so this was, you know, they always had these little parking sp spaces right here. I'm assuming those are going by the mm -hmm. wayside. Um, and then this was a, a cool, fun little bar area for a while. It, just kind of It outdoor. was a great, I mean, what a great spot. I mean, it, that's kind of what that whole neighborhood, you know, really kind of needed again. It did. It gave it a little more traction. I mean, you could go with your families, your dogs, hang out, outdoor space, live music. Yeah, and it really became a fat piece of the fabric of the neighborhood. And so they actually just got it approved to move it right down the street, which I think is really important. And um, so props keep it to, going. Props to the courtyard. But this is an, a, gr a great piece of land right here because you have, you know, this. First of all, these these apartments. Let's talk about the big winners. Yep. <laughs> these two apartment buildings right here get to raise their prices right away. Yeah. UCSD students coming in who are going to want to, you know, live and walk right across uh, over here to where their little mini campus is going to be. And then, of course, uh, there's other winners, too, with uh, some of these, you know, like, you know, you have the UPS store here, the Starbucks that we used to, you know, run into each other mm -hmm. at right there, um, the grocery outlet, bargain market right here. Well, and that is owned by, uh, I think Bosa bought that parcel of land, so that will probably change someday. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Bosa mm -hmm. bought this? Mm -hmm. Wow. I so, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So Didn't know that either. I, huh? I had no idea, because that grocery outlet is not that... Old. No, it's relatively new. Okay, but so it was something. It was something else before. Yeah, that was uh, Pet Boys. That's back right. In the day. Yeah. So with the, and that grocery outlet bargain market was amazing. When you lived in M2I, which is where I live, right yeah. across the street, right here in this building with the Starbucks. Of course, I lived on the on the poor man's side over here, um, not on the market side. <laughs> well, <laughs> which is better though, from a noise perspective. No, probably. it was great. It, yeah. yeah, it was amazing. But this is a whole little area here. You see, there's a tavern and bowl right here. Yep. So there's a lot going on in this little spot. For them to just drop a campus, mm -hmm. a college campus down right there in that, that little area, I mean, what is that going to do for like uh, real estate values in M2I and Park Boulevard right here, which has always kind of had a yep. stigma because it's right next to the trolley? Yep. I mean, that's got to change things there. Well, I mean, that's part of that conversation, you know, that back in 2000. Four, when we first were buying our condo, the neighborhood looked nothing like it does today. And so with this big, you know, these big projects like this coming in, it just changes everything. And um, I think it's inevitable. Property values right now, I think M2I, which is directly across the street from where UCSD campus um, extension is going to be, I think is going to be, um, it's a great opportunity. I think it's one of the better opportunities right now to buy. Um, there are some risks involved right now because the building's in litigation, which is commonplace in downtown. And that's kind of a phase that we're seeing go away because many of the buildings that were built 10 years ago were kind of getting past that point. And many of them have already filed litigation, but now we're moving on. But uh, this is one of the last. Let's dive into that because the real issue with litigation for buyers is mostly around financing, right, Cooper? It's all financing. I mean, you can't do the low down payment programs anymore. You're very limited in who you can use. Yep. Um, the occupancy is a big factor. Owner occupied second homes generally, not the investment property financing. Uh, interest rates are slightly elevated. Uh, so all of those are the potential negatives associated with uh, condos and litigation. Um, now, when they do get out of litigation, as Brent can talk about ICON, for instance, I mean, you see an immediate bump. Yep. So it's actually a, a great opportunity then. Uh, Once he, the, that litigation is gone, you see it in prices. Right. So the, the big thing is, you know, finding out how you're going to finance that. A lot of people go hard money routes or, um, you know, there are better alternatives than hard money. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, if you can find the money, you can come in, you can buy that property, uh, you're, you're guaranteed to see at least a 10% bump uh, once the litigation gets settled. So I was noticing the prices in M2I are, you know, they're sort of settling a little bit. In fact, we can go ahead and we yep. can look those up on the welcome to San Diego.com uh, website. If you actually just click on buildings, the link that says buildings over here, uh, if we can pull that up, this link right here that says buildings. Um, you can right here search the different buildings, which is super cool. 
uh, we pulled up M2I, and then you click go, and as soon as that loads, bam, you get an introduction to the building right here, uh, information about it right there, image gallery right here, which kind of shows you what, what the building looks like, and then you see uh, what's for sale. So, um, you know, this is what I saw right here, the one bed, one bath for four seventy nine. I saw that and I go, whoa, you know, I haven't seen them priced that well in a while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's an opportunity right there, I would say. Yeah. I mean, if you look at it and it's, uh, well, that one's eight ninety four, but um, there's some other ones and, and you're looking at, you know, still in the $400 a square foot price range, you know, that one. Um, and when you have those conversations and c could you actually build a condo building for $400 a square foot in, in, in downtown, the answer would be no. Not so, you know, close. when you're thinking about investing, well, you're buying it below replacement cost. And so that's kind of a no brainer. Uh, but, Good way to look at it. you know, can you, you know, get the financing? That's, those are the objections that you can overcome. And, and the answer is yes, there, there's options out there. We have lenders that certainly we, that can do that. It's, um, it, but it, the reason why pricing usually dips is um, it narrows the field quite a bit. And so properties will sit on the market longer. But if you are a cash buyer or you have the means to come up with that financing, then you know, you're know you at an advantage. Cooper, does it just mean a bigger down payment? Is that what it basically yeah, boils down to? Yeah, essentially a bigger down payment. So yeah, so you're looking 20 plus down. 20%, let's say 25% yeah. down. Yeah. So you can still get most of it financed. Then, yeah, you know? absolutely. I mean, it's, it, that's not a huge hurdle in, in, in reality, in the big scheme of things. Maybe in comparison to some of the other situations where you can put 3% down and stuff like that, it seems like a lot, but in the big scheme of things, it's 20% down. I mean, that I, I, I remember a time when I first was in the business, that was kind of the norm. Yeah. It was 20% yeah. down. That's just what you kind of put aside. Yeah, and then they just started doing 10%. Yeah, and then things kind of snowballed from there. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was the first domino. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I could tell you from experience, uh, I, I'm on the executive board at the Icon Building, and we just went through the whole litigation process, and it was a long, drawn-out thing. But now that we have settled, and we got a large settlement, we're prioritizing and trying to figure out, you know, the best way to allocate those funds, and um, and so we're seeing a spike in values. And people are able to refinance, and so, yeah. and that's kind of the phase. And so we're kind of getting out of that litigation phase in downtown. And are, there, and are there any other buildings that are in litigation right now that might be good investment opportunities as well? Um, there are. Uh, What's the Park Terrace? Is that the one by Icon? So that Park just Terrace is about to settle. About uh, to settle, or, or if not, they may have already settled. So Park Terrace is. I've seen some value spike. I, I do see upside to that because Ballpark Village is right next door, uh, JMI's project. Well, heck, let's just go right here yeah, on the WelcomeSanDiego.com website, and we can search ourselves right here. We can look at Park Terrace because you've got all the buildings listed here in alphabetical order. Yep. And so that makes it super easy to go, uh, all right, where is Park Terrace? There it is. Boom. So you are just... Icon is just north of that. Park Terrace is the furthest south parcel right there on on uh, 10th Avenue. Yep, we'll just show you right here. We'll just go right down. Let's take a walk down 10th Avenue here. How about oh, that? Let's do. Go Lolita. past J Street here, and oh, there it is. You got Lolita's right at the corner. There. Icon, oh. boom, it's that tall guy right yeah, there that's, that's on the, the right. with the sky box. It looks and that's the Pecco, field. right yep. there. You can see uh, what they were doing. They were getting ready for the uh, monster truck. Monster yeah. truck. Yeah. <laughs> they shot this last <laughs> time. <laughs> that's hilarious. Uh, so this one right here, this is Icon. Yep. And so that just came out. Now, Park Terrace, we just have to go down one more building and boom. It's right there. It's kind right. of a pie wedge. Right across. It's always been interesting to me that Park Terrace has sort of been this uh, this stepchild building in downtown because it's right across the street from Peckham Park. I mean, I lived in Park Terrace yeah. Yeah. in 2009 yeah. and had a view into the stadium. It was amazing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, you'd never be able to rent it for what I rented it for back then. But uh, there's two buildings, actually, that are Park Terrace here. Yep. I think the stigma has always been, well, Park Boulevard, and then it and then gets to the that X factor. huge parking lot that was right there. And if you zoom out, you can see that huge, one of the largest um, parcels of land downtown is that big triangle. triangle. So there's a big mixed-use development happening there called Ball Bar Ballpark Village. And that was always planned to be the cornerstone development to Petco Park. And it was owned by, or it is owned by JMI or John Moore's. Interesting. And so it's a mixed-use development with a with residential and commercial, 
There's a high-rise tower in there with uh, um, apartments that um, they've already. When are those coming? When are those coming on board? Next year, I think, yeah. sometime. But the building's already been crowned and completed. Uh, well, not completed, but um, it's uh, you know I think that it's, it's been up. topped off. Yeah, yeah, it's up, and a lot of the uh, mixed-use stuff is filling in. Eventually, they'll activate that with re new restaurants. There'll be incubator space. There'll be all kinds of things happening there. And all of a sudden, you know, what was on the outskirts will become And that's how it always central. works. And, and, then, and so, yeah. you know, these are those conversations, again, back to Golden Hill. And, and you know, if you're, you're a little bit on the outskirts, but, you know, people, I think if you were willing to uh, take that little risk, you know, it's just a short jaunt down the hill. And with what's happening with just north of uh, the ballpark district of downtown, the northern part of East Village is what's becoming the idea district or makers quarter yeah that's bi big news and there's going to be a lot of development you know and there'll be work workplace um, and places to go to up in that um, northern part of East Village which hasn't been activated yeah that's yet. what's been lacking I mean I think that's kind of stopped a lot of um, values and other things from really kind of going up at, at the pace we've seen in other areas of downtown it just there's there's no infrastructure outside of you know a few condos here and there mm -hmm. in that area. Yeah, so well, it's it's coming. It's coming quick. And the yeah. idea district's awesome. I mean, the plans there are yeah. brilliant. Right. Uh, it's a whole new concept of like the live work. You know. Yeah. Get everything you need in one place. Idea, which I think a lot of people are going to really dig on. Oh. I mean, that's one of the things I miss about uh, living in downtown. Was you come home, you park your car, you're done with that thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you can get wherever you need to on foot from there. That's super duper convenient. When you live in Del Mar like I do now, mm -hmm. everything's a car ride. I mean, yeah. even if I'm going to the yoga studio, it's a mile away. You know, you're driving. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm in the car, in and out of the car, in and out of the yeah. car. So the idea that you can build something like that in an area that's already super urban, super walkable, yep. beyond that, I think it's going to be very, very attractive. Well, and that's what people want. And, and you know, still, Golden Hill is walkable. You know, you, you think about 25th Street, and um, how activated that little corridor is with you know the turf club and and you have mixed and counterpoint and you have you know uh, tiger eye hair salon you have a lot of different you yeah. know all these little things that are filling in there there's some architectural buildings and you can see it happening and then with the guild on 30th with just another five blocks out it's all kind of coming together and um, and so I think you know with that in mind, um, you know, if you're willing to roll the dice a little bit, um, I think that you'll definitely see some upside. Um, what about places like South Park, for example, mm -hmm. where, um, you know, we've already seen a tremendous run. Yeah. A tremendous run has, yeah. has happened there. Oh, yeah. Uh, is there still room? You know, I s we've talked to economists, the, the Gary Londons and the um, uh, Alan Nevins, and, and you know their prediction for San Diego is the market strong and it will continue to to be strong just because simple economics supply and demand and there's not enough housing right now and so and the trends are that people want to live close to the urban core close to their workplace and close to that walkability that everyone wants to be able to go to restaurants and do the things just outside their doorstep and so um, those are the conversations and because you can't build except vertically the only neighborhoods that really embrace that vertical growth are downtown true and those peripheral neighborhoods are unique because you know one of the biggest buyer demographics right now is the Millennials just like Cooper and I uh, you know we yeah had our condos and a growing family and eventually we outgrew our condos and so we moved to the peripheral neighborhoods but that will be the trend with this big demographic one day when they start having kids and they want to move to South Park, North Park, Mission Hills, they want to, you know, Golden Hill. So where you can get a little bit bigger piece of property that has a yard. You know, there's a, to me there was a lot to be said to open the door and tell my daughter go outside and play, you know, rather than walking across the street to Petco Park and that was my backyard. So, you know, it's just what environment that you're comfortable with. And, and yeah. so I think that there's a big enough demand to have that that, that will sustain an attraction. And schools, I mean, really at there the end of go. the day, 
Yep. I mean, once you start having kids, you hit that demographic. Yeah. It's all about the schools. It Where is. can you find some good schools? Golden Hill isn't quite there yet. Well, South Park. Um, Albert mm -hmm. Einstein. Yeah. Has they, they just moved their uh, yeah. Albert Einstein Academy to Golden Hill. Actually, Golden Hill has some pretty high-rated schools. And, okay. And it's improving. So, you know, and with the Idea District and Urban Discovery Academy, it's all kind of Again, That's well, true. San Diego High is ago. is one of the best. I mean, so right down downtown, right in the Idea District, is you know one a very high rated high school yeah. as high well. Tech high too. Yep. So. High Tech High as well down there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. lots so. of good stuff. Yeah, hey, there's one. There was a property you sent me um, that I wanted to talk about. Yeah. Um, this is one I think you guys closed recently. Yeah. Um, this is in Fairmount Park. Yeah, right? Fairmount Park. Here's the this here's the address. My wife, uh, Erica Cole. She we're a, a you know team Cole part of uh, Welcome to San Diego, but she's been in real estate as long as I have. We've been almost 15 years, and then we worked for developers back in the day, but uh, this was a listing that we had kind of in one of those peripheral neighborhoods, and it's worth a conversation. It's a, it's a neat little pocket, and you mentioned South Park, and to me, I see a lot of parallels to South Park because um, there's not a lot of mixed zoning, kind of like North Park, how you have those little Huffman apartment buildings where, where you'll have four units and then you'll have a nice home next to it or something like that. This is primarily home and homes and if you pull up the map you can kind of see where, where we're talking about on, on this here. This little, little triangle. triangle right there that's bound by the 15, the 94, and the 805 and we had a listing right there where the, the little pointer is on 39th Street and you know it's, it's a special little neighborhood that I can see a lot happening. People are purchasing properties over there. You can still buy in the fours. Four well, sold five, over list, right? and it sold listed. well over list. Now, she, uh, the owner, bought this a few years prior, and they did improvements, and and so it was their intent to. Let's see what you can get for five eighty six, Coop. How about that? Let's go yeah. in here and see what you. Can I'm get scared. For I'm scared. Well, hey, I invite. Now, I will say we were pushing the market on this one, and when we took the listing at 571, we thought, okay, is it going to appraise? We want, we, we, there's a fine line there, and we wanted to make sure that we were still within the range, but um, you could see Viking Appliances. They did a nice job, you know, mid-century home. This is a turnkey spot. It, it's turnkey. It, it had a view, and it was a flat lot. You could easily put a pool in the backyard. Really? It, it, things that, like, you don't find in South Park that there's, like, you know, definitely some upside too. So, um, so it was really attractive. We held a couple open houses and we had multiple offers on it. It was listed at five seventy one, and we ended up uh, getting it in escrow and closing it five eighty six. So, um, but nice you can still find the, the the homes that aren't quite as turnkey as this that have some upside. And so, yeah. if you've been looking in those other areas, I would, you know, now of course it's not a perfect home. There's there's probably some. Um, details that you would enhance the home with, but um, wh what I'm seeing in that neighborhood is people really putting their own design and, and um, private Touch. ownership. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, this I, I didn't, I didn't, honestly, I've never heard about this area. Yeah. Never yeah. heard about it. Five minutes from downtown. For me, that looks like a pretty good in, deal in comparison to what else you're going to be looking at in that price range. Right. And three bedrooms, two baths, that close. You get on the 94 and literally you exit Home Avenue, two exits off of the 94 and take a left up Home Avenue, take another left. You can see that there's a corridor there that um, is prime for development if, if, you know, for mixed use and, and commercial. So I could see in the future there being opportunity to have mixed use projects along that and corridor. I mean, the, the, like he hit on, what Brent hit on, I mean, it is so close to downtown. It's essentially Golden Hill, you're one exit off. Uh, it's super easy to get downtown. Right and there. let's not forget about all the freeways that converge right, right there. So depending on where you work, where you need to get to, it is one of those opportunities where you're not going to be stuck on the interior roads for 15, 20, 30 minutes mm -hmm. trying to get you know, to the freeways to get to work or vice versa. This you get right on any of the three or four freeways right there within minutes, um, and you can you know converge from there. Uh, really gives you good access to the entire. It's nice entire too when there's city. traffic because you can pull up ways and have alternative yeah. routes that yeah. you can go in case you need to. 
what I think is really cool about that, so that's East South Park basically, but it's a short Uber. I mean, that's at the end of the day, yeah. if you want the downtown. Yeah, I mean, probably less. You know, yeah, probably five bucks. Yeah, it's like yeah. six or seven, I yeah. bet you. Um, you know, to Uber it down and, you know, and get in the mix and then easily get back home and not have to worry about, you know, hey, we're going to go have a couple beers here. You know, let's not even think about it. Let's just Uber the thing in there. Uh, that's also very nice. And I think, you know, what we kind of see is we, when we're looking at downtown, um, all those things is just kind of keep, it's like they just keep adding positives. They keep getting in, it keeps piling in, keeps piling in, keeps piling in. I feel like there's a breaking point coming in downtown where it's just going to be like, like that. We've been waiting for that. Like where it's just going to all of a sudden people are going to realize it. Like, wait a minute, there's all this stuff down here. Because like I didn't even know the UCSD thing. Yeah. You know, I, I'd probably have to go down there. You know, right. six months from now and then go, yeah. what the heck's going on? Well, and they're putting billions of dollars into the waterfront down there. That's you true. Know? And so I mean, talk about a game changer. If you look at the whole Columbia district and that what's happening there, and you know, there's. There's just so much happening, and you know, and then you you project that over down to the Chula Vista waterfront, and, and I know I was going to mention another up and coming neighborhood would be, uh, you know, it's more of a, a risk uh, outside um, option, but I think National City would be an area to look at because to me it's a no brainer. It's close to the waterfront. You're right in between Chula Vista, where they're going to be putting in, you know, this world class waterfront. Yeah, and it will kind of bridge the gap, and there's going to be 53, I believe, developable ac acres along the waterfront there that will have bike paths and parks and stuff. So that might be one to look at. National down the City National says, City. "All right, yeah, all right." Could be a sleeper. Trying to take me out of downtown yeah. here. I'm that talking about N2I. I'm talking about reliving the glory days yeah, here. <laughs> These are the new glory days. <laughs> <laughs> These, this is the East Village 30 years before, you know. The old glory days. This is basically saying, no, this is the new glory days are making smart investments. Yeah. The old glory days are walking distance to bars, yeah, right? right. <laughs> yes, or living in a bar. <laughs> or living in one like you did yeah, for yeah. all those years. <laughs> you might want to clarify that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was pretty much a bar when we lived there, and then we turned it into the bar at the corner, which uh, a lot of fond memories from that. The corner was an amazing place, man. I, I mean, I could talk all day about the corner and all the yeah. times we had there. Uh, so many, so Jägermeister many Spice. So I mean, Spice Jägermeister. You still selling them, I think, yeah. on the on the street corners now. Winging it. No, <laughs> no lemonade stands for my girls. <laughs> <laughs> Spice Jäger. Uh, well, this is cool. I think the, there's definitely some things to look at here. Uh, one of the things I do want to mention too, um, before we close out, is just the, the resource that the website is at welcome to San Diego dot com uh, because you know we pretty much pulled all that stuff up on here everything that was for sale you can see all the photos we basically so there's no listings in Park Terrace um, which is crazy yeah. uh, but it's it's a small you know yeah. building and it's only we what eight floors right so, oh really yeah so so you know we we do get a fair amount of listings downtown and I have a couple coming I know one at Icon and that aren't on the market yet so. You know, I think that that can definitely be an advantage in the seller's market that we're in right now. So no question, something to talk about. Hundred percent. And so this is uh, this is a great resource for people who want to research the buildings or just look at the different neighborhoods. You know, you can look at them all right here. You can see, um, you can pull this up. There's a list. Um, if we can throw that up real quick, Jade. There's a there's a list here in the neighborhoods you can go through and you can research these different neighborhoods one by one if you want to. You have Metro San Diego even has other things like the beach communities, North yeah. County Coastal, and the then downtown we have a blog areas. Up there too, I was gonna say. Yeah, there's a blog up here as well, which has a bunch of great information uh, about what's going on. You know what's happening. If I had any sense and I read the blog, I would know about UCSD probably. Uh, but that <laughs> <laughs> but since uh, you know I'm not down there, and that's the thing. Yeah. A lot of people want to live downtown. And um, that's, a, that's a goal that a lot of people have. In fact, we help someone on when this listing do just that. They you know, sell a place and move into downtown. Yeah. Um, in fact, with one of your uh, colleagues, or maybe former colleague, Nicole Hazelson, I don't know if she's, oh, yeah. she's yeah. still with yeah. you guys, right? Yeah, well, she's on the Savina project. But yeah. She's, you know, was in her office. Still in your office, friend. right? Yeah. yeah. She's Nicole, awesome. she's great. Mm -hmm. So she helped us uh, do that for somebody. And, you know, people want to do that. And I think the more things that happen down there, it's going to start to spread. Like, the word hasn't quite spread yet mm -hmm. about downtown. People still don't quite get it yep. but I think there's a tipping point coming and when it does I think prices go way higher oh they do for sure well you know for it to make sense for a developer right now to actually build condos for sale uh, a lot of these East Village projects they're looking at minimum thousand dollars a square foot so we're talking a million bucks for a thousand dollar or a thousand square foot condo and and that the neighborhood doesn't justify that right now and so that's why a lot of these are 
apartments for now, and because that's a money maker, yeah. you know, big demand for apartments uh, to to live. But when they can start converting those, and that'll probably be the next phase that we'll see is conversion developments because. Um, yeah, no, and a lot of those apartments went up too because the construction financing for resale dried up on the commercial market. Correctly, so they were kind of left holding the bag, and is all and the, they all could the do. litigation concerns. Yeah, you know, there's what it was, it was a smart move. You yeah, know, by the builders who had the permits, they had the clearance to do what they were going to do there. Sure. Eh, just you know, take a slight turn this direction, and let's make some cash. Yep. You know, while the getting's good because rents are high, and it's hard to find places to live downtown. You well, know? they can sell those buildings too. The cap rates are so low on I apartment know. buildings that I mean, it almost makes sense just to do apartments. <laughs> I know. I that's a, that's I, why I'm concerned that they would even you know. build anything else. That's like we, know, we yeah. saw like Pacific Gate and some of the places the big these big developments that are going on. I tried to sit down and do the math and be like, you know what? What if they re just did these as luxury rentals, and then took that and turned it and just tried to flip the whole building instead of trying to sell individual yeah. units? Tried to try to do the math. It's really hard to do, but. Um, I, gosh, I don't know. It's like that seems like a lot less headache, a lot less marketing dollars. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Yeah. Well, that market's I think shifting too. I think that had its heyday the last couple of years, and now I think things will shift. There's a lot that's hitting apartment-wise, downtown Little Italy. Um, so I'll be curious to kind of see if those dollar amounts will it hold? Will it hold? We will find out, and I'm sure we will discuss right here on this program. Guys, thank you so much for your time today. Really, really appreciate Thanks, it. Always oh, a great pleasure. To, been great to see you both. Yeah, great to see you too. All right. Hey, you are now officially smarter than everyone else. Tune in again to do just that.